the teams have been selected. The sport always wins. For the next biggest soccer tournament in the country, presidents of Ivy League stand trial. As anti-Semitism rises in the country, two months of the war in the Middle East, how it's affecting the newborns and their mothers, and representation in toys. The kids get the toys before their surgery. What a group of college students are doing for a special group of children this Christmas. These stories and more coming up on Newsbreak. Hello, South Florida. I'm Nicolette Esper. And I'm Julian Davis. Today's Friday, December 8th, 2023. Live from the Lee Kaplan School of Journalism and Media in North Miami, this is Kaplan News. Football frenzy as positions are drawn here in South Florida for the Copa America and Kaplan News was there. It is now confirmed which national teams will be competing against each other in the group stages of the 2024 Copa America. Kaplan News reporter Valentina Caspari has more on last night's drawing and how South Florida will play a big role at the world's oldest soccer tournament. I'm here in downtown Miami where the Copa America drawing for the 2024 soccer tournament will take place this summer in the United States. 16 national teams from North, Central and South America discover their opponents for the group stage portion of this soccer tournament. The night started out with an introduction from Comebol President Alejandro Dominguez, followed by CONCACAF President Victor Montagliani and his excitement for this event. Uh, this is a testament to the work done by the two confederations that it just shows when football comes together and confederations come together, obviously with the support of FIFA and our, and, and our president. Uh, Infantino, that um, the sport always wins. Phenomenal coaches and extraordinary soccer players made an appearance at the ceremony, including world champion coach Lionel Scaloni and retired Brazilian superstar Ronaldinho. Besides the drawing, some other exciting news was announced. The official mascot, Capitan the Eagle, will symbolize strength and excellence for the entirety of the tournament. Also, the official ball of the Copa America in partnership with Puma was presented on stage, called El Cumbre. The final drawings for group stage positions resulted in Argentina, Peru, Chile, and CONCACAF match five for group A, Mexico, Ecuador, Venezuela, and Jamaica for group B, United States, Uruguay, Panama, and Bolivia for group C, and lastly, Brazil, Colombia, Paraguay, and CONCACAF match six for group D. Groups B and C have all four teams set, but as for groups A and D, a final match from four teams of the CONCACAF Association will strive for their seat at the tournament. The group stage teams are now set, and the countdown officially begins for the 2024 Copa America inauguration game taking place in Atlanta, with the final being here at the Hard Rock Stadium. In downtown Miami, I'm Valentina Gaspari reporting for Kaplan News. A suburban Orlando mother is arrested in the courthouse after her 11-year-old son shot two teammates at football practice. 33-year-old Cheryl Johnson is accused of storing and leaving a loaded gun around a child. Johnson's son is believed to have been a victim of bullying. A fight in the field then led to the parking lot, leaving one team shot in the arm and another in the torso. Both are expected to fully recover. Community members in Las Vegas coming together to mourn the lives lost in the UNLV school shooting. Reporter Brian Horwith from KTNV has more on last night's vigil and Wednesday's mass shooting. Please take me to the king. Tonight brought unity and togetherness in a safe place, but this morning UNLV's student union was a frightening place for Chris Solomon and several dozen UNLV students and volunteers with his nonprofit Rise Free. They were there for an event on the second floor. You know, we're, we're organizing students, we're teaching them about things, and it was fun, and that all turned into, you know, fear and cries from students inside the um, meeting room. For a while, after a shooter opened fire at Beam Hall, it was complete chaos on the campus, Solomon says. All of us had to raise our hands up. They told us to be prepared. Though everyone at his event was able to make it out safe, the sights, sounds, and emotions of the day won't be forgotten, he says. I don't know who it was, but there was someone's body present as we were leaving behind Student Union. Solomon says he felt it was important to be at the vigil, which was put on in part by Tori Russell, founder of Broadway in the Hood, a local theater production organization. 
Russell says togetherness was needed Wednesday night and will be needed in the days and nights ahead. And we all came together to be able to just say, come together and love on each other. That was Brian Horwith from KTNV reporting. Authorities say the gunman sent letters to university personnel before he opened fire. Detectives are asking faculty members to proceed with caution if they received a letter from the gunman. The president of an Ivy League university is in hot water this morning after comments she made on Capitol Hill. Tuesday's hearing also involved administrators from MIT and Harvard. In the hearing, University of Pennsylvania President Liz McGill was asked if calling for the genocide of Jews during student protests is considered bullying or harassment. So the answer is yes. It is a context-dependent decision, Congresswoman. It's a context-dependent decision. That's your testimony today. Calling for the genocide of Jews is depending upon the context. That is not bullying or harassment. This is the easiest question to answer yes, Ms. McGill. President McGill's answer led to an emergency meeting yesterday of her university's board of trustees. Babies born in the Gaza Strip during the Israel-Hamas war was evacuated to Cairo. Many have yet to be reunited with their parents. Preterm babies are in dire condition. Are we good? Are in dire conditions to struggle, are struggling to receive sufficient care. CNN's Larry Madawo has more on the story. Every breath is a miracle for these babies born prematurely during the war in the Gaza Strip. They're here because Israeli forces ordered the Al Shifa hospital in the north evacuated, claiming Hamas terrorists operated from there. Baby formula is the only source of nutrition here. Many of the mothers have not been found yet. Nobody knows if they're alive or dead. Shaima Abu Khater just arrived and is meeting her daughter for the first time since she was born 38 days ago. Your father says to tell you that he loves you. She tells baby Kenda, her voice breaking. This is the closest she can get to her own child. She was incubated as soon as she was born. Kenda and 11 other preterm babies from Al Shifa came to the new capital administrative hospital in Cairo over two weeks ago. Nine more have arrived from across Gaza since. Salsan Abu Amsha gave birth to twin girls two months early, just six days after the Israel-Hamas war started in the north. Shifa was under siege. Out of despair, I lost hope and I left. I wanted to take my girls with me, but the doctors said if I did, they would die. They said to leave them and God would protect them. Eight have made it out of the NICU into this nursery. But reuniting them with their parents might be harder than saving their lives. We know only the name for the mother, but we don't know where the mother is now. It's not easy being green, but that's not a problem for a baby alligator born here in Florida. That's still ahead, and so is this story. Like, you go to the store, you don't really see many toys with disabilities. If it's nice to have something that looks and represents you. Hard times for the holidays. Being met with gifts from students. News break, we'll be back in two minutes. How prepared is your family if a tornado shows up at your doorstep, or a flood, or a hurricane? You, you can't just turn away a natural disaster. That's why it's important to go to ready.gov plan now. It has the tools and tips you need to make an emergency plan with your family. So if disaster comes knocking, let's go. You'll be ready to help keep your family safe. It's just a pizza. Yes. Make a plan today.
Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign, not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. I help our fellows design their paths as creative entrepreneurs. My experiences serving startups, creative businesses, and cultural organizations, and my journey as a queer mixed immigrant with Haitian and Arabic roots inform the co-creative environment we foster at Radcliffe. We leverage our collective diversity to encourage the building of lifelong personal learning networks and mindsets that stimulate continuous innovation. Joy from Toys, gifts made for children in the hospital with a very special twist. Kids with disabilities don't regularly see toys that represent them, but a group of college students are trying to do something about the issue. As Kaplan's Leia Nabu Tarbush reports, the group is modifying toys to be more inclusive this holiday season. In Roanoke, Virginia, children with disabilities often find themselves underrepresented in the toy aisle. But this holiday season, a group of compassionate college students from Roanoke College is changing that narrative. Meet Toys Like Me, a nonprofit founded by Professor Francis McCutcheon seven years ago. The kids get the toys before their surgery, and the toys are explained to them, the surgery is explained to them on the toy, which is more respectful in many cases, especially for kids who don't like to be touched. Like, you go to the store, you don't really see many toys with disabilities. If it's nice to have something that looks and represents you. Victoria Fulb, a senior at Rowano College, emphasizes the importance of representation in toys. Making their Christmas normal would be one word, but I think the word we prefer is inclusive. That their Christmas is just like anybody else's Christmas. The initiative has become a community effort with donations coming in and the modified toys being sent to Cure Leon's hospital. So I've always kind of been around kids with disabilities, but it means a lot to me that there's an organization like this that helps modify toys. The donations to the rail yard dogs come to us, we modify them and then we send them on to Carillion. So it's, it's a whole community effort. And as the holidays approach, these toys will bring joy to kids during growing up college's exam week before Christmas. When, when, when the kids are smiling and laughing and their parents haven't seen them smile in so long, or they're coming out of surgery and they're in pain, but this little smile comes out, it means so much to the moms and dads too. Reporting for Kaplan News, I'm Leanne abu an extremely rare and to some questionably cute alligator has been born. A leucistic gator described by biologists as lacking pigmentation was born in Gatorland this week, first of its kind to be in human care. She is believed to be only one of eight in the world and not to be confused with albino gators as they have a complete loss of, of pigmentation. You're watching Newsbreak and we're coming right back. Severe weather can strike anytime, anywhere, but there's a simple way to stay safe. Hey, Jim Cantori here. I stay safe in dangerous weather by planning ahead. You can stay safe too with a few easy steps. Build an inexpensive kit with supplies for your family's needs. Write down important information like phone numbers and medications. Always talk with your family and remember any pets in your planning. Be ready, be safe. Start your plan today at ready.gov plan. I don't know why you're so sad. You've got a roof over your head. You gotta stop with that depression stuff. That's a white people thing. You all right? It just feels like it's coming from everywhere. Do you want to talk about it? You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? If you're buzzed and doing this, To make yourself feel okay to drive? ZWX. Ah. You're not.
not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular you. That's all the time we have for news break. I'm Nicolette Esper. And I'm Julian Davis. Get more news anytime at kaplannews.fiu.edu.